Well, g'day curd nerds. Welcome to another cheese video. This one's a taste test for my chili brie. And here it is. So my chili brie was made in, oh, the writing's rubbed off. Oh, it was a while ago about four, six, maybe eight weeks ago. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it is little uh, micro perforated cheese wrap. Uh, and it was based on a cheese uh, that we found in the supermarket. It was based on this cheese here, which is Unicorn Chili Brie. And you can see that there. So uh, this has very similar stuff inside that uh, mine does. So it's got milk, cream, salt, starter cultures, non-animal rennet and chili, which is exactly what I put into my cheese. So let me open this up and we'll have a look at see and see how good the white mold growth was. Um, and yeah, I think my wrapping is actually on par with their wrapping, so that's a good thing. <laughs> so I'm not such a disaster at wrapping things as I thought I was. Anyway, let's cut this open. I use one one sticky tape, I think. There we go. Oh, I can see underneath. We've got a lovely white mold coating. Goodness me, look at that. So that's spot on. Oh, I can smell it now. Oh, look at that. That is just phenomenal. Oh, it smells earthy, mushroomy. Mmm, just kind of what you want. Um, now this has come up to room temperature. If you press it, it's a little bit firm, which is okay. And that's the style. Remember, this was based on the, uh, how do I say it again? Uh, it's based on the um, uh, stabilized paste, washed curd, white mold cheese recipe that is in uh, Giannoclus Caldwell's Mastering Artisan Cheese Making book. So it's adapted from that, it's not exactly the same. Fairly close though. All right, so the mold growth is fantastic. Uh, there's no mushiness, or well, sorry, soggy bits. The mold, there's no blue mold, it's just all white, which is fantastic. So without further ado, let's cut into this bad boy. Oh no, we don't cut it in half, do we? That's what we do, we do cut a wedge. Oh, that's nice. Kind of wedge there. And look at that. That's magnificent. Yeah, a little bit squishy when you press it. So it's got chili all the way through it. And uh, yeah, the, the white mold has made it a little bit firm. You can see it's aged quite well because the um, around the outside, there's a little bit of rind action going on. It's a little bit darker on the outside than it is on the inside. So this is a typical ex example of a uh, of a, a stabilised paste white mould cheese. A few holes and stuff in it where um, it didn't press, but the, we didn't we well, don't press them anyway. They're pressed on their own weight. But let's cut a, a sliver. Yeah, that is starting to get a little bit gooey there. Now it's been sitting here at room temperature for about two hours. Yeah, two hours. So let's try it. We'll try without cracker first. So cracker lacking, and then we'll try it with a cracker. So here we go, lots of chili through it, which is fantastic. Mmm, my goodness. The salt, perfect. I think I only salted these for two hours, if I remember rightly. <clears throat> Um, uh, two, two to two and a half hours. Oh, absolutely perfect. And the chilli flavour, great. It's not really strong, like I kind of expected, but it's between mild and hot, if that makes any sense. Mmm. That is so good. Oop.
It never fails to impress me, the, um, that stabilised paste fake camembert recipe. But as I said, this is a chilli brie, not to be confused with a camembert. The only difference between a camembert and a brie is the size. This is a petite brie, as they kind of label it these days. But anyway, let's have a little bit with a cracker. This is not as moist. Well, I'm going to do a comparison in a minute with the um, the unicorn one. Oop. That's nice. It's okay. Crack adds a little bit more texture, but nothing more to the cheese really. So I'm so glad that I actually mixed the chilies through the curds uh, before I put them into the moulds. I think that helped a lot. Uh, and it doesn't really matter. You, you really remember the, on the sides of the cheese there were those, the, uh, there was um, uh, cavities in the sides of the cheese. You can't tell, you couldn't tell now because the white moulds covered it up. It's made a really nice rind. And um, sure, there's some uh, mechanical holes in the middle, but... Like I said, it was pressed under its own weight. The recipe is what it is, and I think it's really good. Uh, not, no, I don't think. I know. I know it's really good because I've just tasted it. So, no, really good. So let's, um, I've got to have another bit. Mmm. That one's for Kim. Alrighty. Mmm. So good. Anyway. So let's compare the two. So this is, um... Uh, unicorn cheese and it's made in uh, it's manufactured by snow brand australia proprietary limited in nara in new south wales hey i used to work there when i was in the navy at the naval air station anyway uh, look at a little bit of history so unicorn brand um this is 125 grams mine's a lot heavier and a lot thicker this is a lot thinner let's compare the two here we go there we go, mine's about a mm, centimetre taller, which is okay. Let's take the big sticker off. They've used the same sort of micro perforator paper that I've used to wrap the cheese, which is good. Oh, come here, get off. These big stickers make it difficult. Right, now this has been sitting in the cheese in the fridge for, I don't know, three or four weeks. Since we bought it, I wanted to buy it for a comparison. Oh, the mould coating looks very similar. Um, similar clarity. Uh, it's a little bit squishier. So you can press down, you can see it move, whereas mine doesn't kind of move. Anyway, let's take a little wedge out of this one. Just so we can see the difference. So there's a little bit squishier I suppose that's the word for it and there's chili through it but certainly not as much chili as mine uh, compare the two mine's got a lot more chili going through it compared to the unicorn brand anyway let's just try this one by itself uh, colors similar mine's a little bit darker mine's firmer Compared to this one's a bit runnier. I think this one's a bit older though, but that's okay. All right, let's try. Texture's a lot smoother. Well, not smoother. It's a lot um, runnier. So like a, a runnier camembert. But I can tell this is kind of like a... It does remind me of a stabilised paste, but not as stable as this one. Same chilli flavour, depth, saltiness is very similar. Very similar saltiness. The white rind is thicker though, on the unicorn one. But nice. Which is good because very similar. 
in flavour, but not in squishiness. So like this one's kind of runny-ish on the inside. You can press it and you can see it bulge, whereas you press mine, bulges slightly, but not as much. But two absolutely lovely cheeses. I nearly nailed it, I think. Maybe if the curds weren't as uh, firm when I put them into the baskets, into the hoops, um, it could have got a little bit more runnier. I remember the first time round when I made this style of cheese, the um, uh, stabilised paste white mould cheese, uh, that it was quite firm like this as well. So maybe I need to stir it a little bit less uh, to have a little bit more moisture. But uh, look, for the style of cheese it is, I think it's fantastic. It really is. Really nice cheese. So my verdict is do yourself a favour and try it out. If you're into the um, the unicorn uh, chili brie, then uh, fill your boots and and try and go buy one. If you're here in Australia, they're available in most supermarkets. It's a very nice little cheese. But however, I do prefer my one being a little bit firmer, and it's got more chili through it and a little bit more bite. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you're not a cheese maker and you're just watching these videos because you like watching me make cheese then yeah, you can buy a similar sort of cheese uh, if you're living here in Australia. So if you want me to make more sort of comparison videos like this, uh, based on a cheese I bought in the supermarket and I'll try and replicate it, then please leave a comment below. I would love to know your thoughts uh, on this style of video. Um, Kim's gonna absolutely love both of these. She, she loves the unicorn one and and uh, definitely loves the stabilised paste one that I've made before. But um, yeah, look, it's Moorish, that's for sure. It's a very, very nice cheese. The flavours are fantastic. The paste is fantastic. And of course, the taste is fantastic. That's what's really important. We can have the ugliest looking cheese, but if it tastes good, hey, it's no problem really, is it? Mm. That just melts in your mouth. Oh. But hey, I'm not biased at all. <laughs> anyway. Well, thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, as always. I appreciate your time. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, then please do so. And ring the little bell so you get notified of more cheesy videos. Uh, if you liked it, uh, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, well, you know what to do. Uh, you can support the show by being a YouTube member or a Patreon. Uh, links are in the description below. You can buy the... Ooh, you can buy the Camembert kit that we have. It gets baskets, but you'll have to add in, obviously, um, some extra cultures that I use, the Thermophilic Culture and Floridanica, I believe. Uh, the two cultures that I use for this, uh, and obviously Penicillium Candidum and Geotrichum. So just uh, if you want a basic kit with the equipment, then you try the Camembert kit. We've got a couple in stock at littlegreenworkshops.com.au. Well, thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, and I will see you next time. <laughs>